So when you have a circular aperture, like we discussed, uh, we are not going to get a diffraction pattern which is linear. We are going to get a diffraction pattern which is rotated, which is about, which is circular, and so we're going to get rings. So you'll have a central bright ring, and then you'll have dark rings, and so on. There's going to be one minor difference between your linear diffraction and circular diffraction, linear slit diffraction and circular slit diffraction, and that is that if you have a circular aperture, then the diffraction is going to become a little bit complicated, and it turns out that when you look at the first minima, so here's your primary max, and here's your first minima, this is the central line, and this is the angular distance to the first minima, so here's theta. Well, we saw that before, we, we would get lambda divided by d, that's the first minima. But when it comes to circular aperture, it turns out that this number turns out to be about 1.22 lambda divided by d. And over here also, you would get 1.22 lambda divided by d. That's all that we have to worry about when it comes to circular aperture. How this comes is not important, it's a rather complicated derivation. But now we can use this and we can talk about the interesting phenomenon that is called as the limit of resolution of any optical instrument. Any optical instrument that you consider, maybe it is a telescope, microscope, or even your eye for that matter, then what we understand from wave optics is that when light waves enter the optical instrument, unlike geometrical optics, you don't get a point image, but due to diffraction. And the diffraction can happen for any optical instrument. For example, if you want to talk about any lens, which you have like so, then diffraction will happen at this point over here. At these points, diffraction is going to take place because there are sharp curvatures. There's nothing you can do to avoid that. And due to this diffraction, what you're going to get is not a point image, wherever your screen is or wherever your retina is, but you're going to get a diffraction pattern like so. And because of this, what's going to happen is when you have two sources and when they are very close to each other, the two diffraction patterns are going to overlap with each other. And if the overlapping is too much, then your optical instrument will not see it as two sources, but it'll see it as one source. And so what we're going to talk about is what is the smallest separation that the two sources can have such that you can just see them to be two sources. And that is given by Lord Rayleigh, and we call it as Rayleigh's criterion. Rayleigh says that if you have two sources whose diffraction patterns are so close to each other that the primary maxima of the first pattern, first source, exactly coincides with the first minima of the second one. So if this is what you're going to get, so this is of the first source, I'll call this as S1, and this is of the second source, S2, then Lord Rayleigh says that when you're, you're on the screen, it no, it just, this just appears to be two sources. So when you look at it, it looks just like this. And this is what we say, and this is when uh, Lord Rayleigh says that limit of resolution has reached. Meaning, you cannot have these two sources any closer. If you have them to be any closer, then they don't look like two sources anymore. They look like one source. And of course, if they have them farther apart, then definitely you can make out as two sources. So, what is the minimum separation that you can have? Well, we know that the distance from the central maxima to the first minima is 1.22 lambda divided by d. So, for all circular apertures, this distance, I'm talking about the angular distance, remember, this is in terms of angle, it's going to be 1.22 lambda divided by d. That is the minimum angle that the two sources can subtend at the optical instrument. If it subtends any lower than that, then the two sources are going to look now as one. All right, let's calculate what is the minimum angular separation that is for our eye. Now, our eye has a pupil 
and this pupil dilates and the pupil relaxes and uh, so it constricts and dilates depending upon the light source. Now we can take the average diameter of the pupil D is about 4 millimeters. Then we can substitute in this number. We can say um, the average light wavelength. Now, in reality, the wavelength of light ranges from 400 to, I think, 600 nanometers. But let's just take an average number. That's going to be 500. I'll just take an average light. And so then, the limit of resolution, we usually call it as delta theta, which is the smallest angular separation the two sources can subtend, such that they look like two, is going to be 1.22 into 500 nano. It's going to be 10 to the minus 9 divided by the diameter, which is going to be 4 into 10 to the minus 3. Okay, let's look at these numbers. Let's put them inside my calculator. 2, 2 into 500, shift 10 to the minus 9 divided by 4 to shift to the minus 3. I get a number which is 1.5 into 10 to the minus 4 radians. Now, we don't have feelings for radians. So let's convert this into degrees. And how we do that, I hope you know how to do that. Radians to degrees is always 180 divided by 3.14. So 180 divided by 3.14. I get about 8.7 into 10 to the minus 3 radi uh, degrees. Again, this is too small to comprehend, so let's convert that into minutes. And how to convert into minutes? Just like how you convert hours into minutes, you multiply by 60. So this number you multiply by 60, and you get about 0.5 minutes. So this is the representation for minutes. So that is the limit of resolution of an average human eye. What this means is that if you have two sources which are so far apart, uh, which are so close to each other that they subtend an angle smaller than half an arc minute, so this is half an arc minute, then you can't see them to be two sources anymore. And to give you a rough idea of how big one arc minute is, if you take a two rupee coin, which is over here, and if you keep this two rupee coin about, about 100 meters away, then the two ends of the coin, the, the diametrical ends of the coin, will be roughly about one arc minute, one arc minute apart. Now, although we did this from our theoretical calculation, and we consider all ideal cases, it turns out when you really stick in the numbers, and when you really look at it, then our eyes are actually worse than this. We cannot actually look down to 0.5 arc minutes, but it is somewhere close to two arc minutes. That means the maximum, that means, the, I, mean, I mean, the best that you can, your eyes can do is when you have two sources which are yay distance apart and they're about 50 meters away, not 100 meters, but about 50 meters away, then you will be just able to notice them as two sources of light. And if they come any closer, then you cannot look at them as two sources, you will notice your brains will register it to be just one source.